Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've just got a quick tutorial on one of my surprising faves from Reason 10, Clang by Sound Iron. Um, this is basically a tune percussion sampler uh, at its heart, uh, just with really high quality samples, really intuitive. And um, so we're going to do a quick overview of the actual layout of the player instrument. And then we'll dig into when we would use it, and then just some general thoughts about making music with it. So, without further ado, the sound of the bell means it's time to begin. So, um, let's just go over this. Um, it's a pretty simple instrument. On the left side, you sort of have the performance side of it. You've got the pitch knob and the mod. Um, you've got the range here for how much a pitch bend affects it whether it's two or you can drag it probably up to 12. Um, it doesn't look like you can manually enter parameters, which is something that would be great to see um, on these instruments, but whatever. Um, and then you've got how these three knobs here basically affect how the mod wheel uh, affects, changes the mod wheel will affect the um, sound. So. Um, let's, um, and even, um, so, and we can even make that stronger, um, although a low pass filter probably, let's just do a comb so it's really, so, it, uh, Basically, these three parameters will allow you to change how the mod wheel affects the sound. Then here, you actually select which of the fundamental sampled instruments you want. A high glockenspiel, a bumbarong, a circle mallets, a cylindrum. I'll let you read the rest. Um, there's some really interesting sounds in there that all sound really good. Um, here, you can control the tuning of them, the octave, and how soon or late the sample starts. Um, sometimes it's nice to put an LFO, just slowly, lightly adjusting the sample start to get a more natural sound. Right now it's all the same, but you could come up with a combinator. Yeah, it's not built into it, but you could make a, com uh, a combinator or just use the programmer to actually uh, modulate that. Uh, then you've got a typical filter here. Um, which low pass, high pass, band pass, comb. You can have a separate, there's a separate ADSR curve for the filter, and you can also do velocity and keyboard tracking. Um, and you've got your amp amplitude section here, your amp section with your ADSR curves, and then you've got a delay and a reverb built into it. Um, and they're pretty straightforward, they sound good. Um, all the main controls you need, whether it's synced, the time, how much dampening, and whether you want the ping pong effect or not. Similarly, a reverb with a time, a pre-delay, low and high dampening, and then the amount I, is like a wet-dry knob. I don't know if it's a pure wet-dry knob or not, but um, that's pretty much what it sounds like to me. Um, and so, if we let's let's sort of a Noah Bell's natural. So, and then we can throw d delay and reverb on there. Um, sounds really good and natural. One thing I'll say is that the sampler does all the sounds up and down the keyboard, but they start to sound less natural as you go out of their um, real range. But sometimes you can get some cool sounds, like you might not be able to hear this without headphones, but I'll try and crank it up. And if we were to turn off the delay. It's almost an 808 
sound. Um, let's see what that. So, uh, a lot of these have these interesting sounds like, um, let's see what the... Ah, because it's percussive, it doesn't have a long sustain, but if we... So this is also the velocity really affects these sounds, so you got to be sure to play with them. But you get some, some interesting sounds outside of the uh, range. So um, that's the first part of this, just what these are about. Um, a big thing I would say um, for how to use them is often you can pan them off to one side and have them complement a more melodic line that's panned to the other side. Like let's say you've got a synth lead on one side, you could put one of these on the other and you get a lot of percussive movement with it, just sort of panned just to, or mixed just below it. Um, some of these will form the entire basis of a song. And then also if you just want a more traditional or like, you know, some happy indie rock. Something like that if you want, um, you know, to try and put Mumford and Sons out of work. Something like that. Um, so before I go any farther into some more advanced thoughts on Clang, I just wanted to let you know that I have recently launched a Patreon page. There's a link down below. I'd really appreciate it if you could visit it. Um, I'm going to try and use the Patreon to actually raise enough money to have a professional editor um, put these videos together because as many of you have noticed, um, video editing is just not my skill um, and I don't really have the time to do it and YouTube doesn't pay enough to actually hire somebody to do it. Um, and then also in exchange for that, not only will you get better videos on YouTube and really support me, uh, but also there'll be a bunch of exclusive content only on Patreon. Um, so go over there and check out what those packages are. But now let's talk about some really interesting things about Clang, because not only does it sound good on its own, it can sound really good, um, like I said, when paired with other sounds. So um, a, a big thing to realize is a lot of the best sounding fullest mixes don't really come down necessarily to EQing or compression, but it comes down to picking instruments that complement each other really well. Um, and picking instruments that fill up the full spectrum and have a wide variety of tones. And Clang really fills that role well by including a lot of percussion, uh, which can add rhythm, but can also add melody. So in addition to like electronic tracks, um, what I would encourage everybody to do is go listen to like Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys and just listen to the arrangements there and how full you can get things by just having a lot of instruments perfectly selected and working together, even without a ton of um, processing on it. Um, so when you think about a song of yours that doesn't have enough rhythm to it, seriously think about putting in one of these clang sounds. But then also these are some really, you can put, you know, the, uh, the clang more percussive side of things with a short attack can really add some rhythm and excitement to your song. Um, but you can also, they've got these pads here and all, but basically the gist of it is pull up the attack on one of these and you can get these more metallic pads which also sound really good um and let's just switch this to like a music box sound
So you could really see that fitting in well, almost in a situation where you've got like an organ and you could just sort of double it up under that. You can also, this whale drum is really cool. Um, so um, let me just turn it up a bit. Now let's do the filtered one actually. are the sorts of effects that will sounds that will really benefit from like arpeggiators so um or note echo let's slow that down a bit so let's go in this direction So there you go. You've basically got your own NPR sound um, library at your tips. Anytime, you know, uh, if the composers for any of their podcasts fall sick, well, they can call on you because now you've got all the tools you need to make uh, those types of songs. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this useful. And be sure to check out the Patreon.